Hi everybody, I'm Corinne Blackstone and welcome to my craft room. Before we get started, be sure to check out the exclusive Facebook group listed down below. It's a fun place where you can post your crafts, your questions, and get to know other crafters. In today's video, this is something I've wanted to do for a while. We are going to do some test cutting and testing and review the Paper Studio, both permanent vinyl and a couple of different versions of HTV. I have permanent vinyl in like a hot pink. We have a couple different HTV, so this is their foil HTV. This is just their solid color HTV. And then this one here is a, pa a patterned glitter HTV. I found it, thought it was cute, so we're gonna give them a shot. Now we're gonna go ahead and put them on a tumbler, and then I have a t-shirt that's just sort of a scrap t-shirt that I do some testing on that we put them on as well. I'm gonna show you guys how to do some test cuts. Make sure you have the right cut setting. We are gonna then cut out the decal and all of that, and the iron on. We're going to press, we're going to go over all the directions, and then I'm going to give you guys my final thoughts on the Paper Studio brand HTV, or as they call it, iron on, and their vinyl. Whatever we would do, we do it just for fun. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about was the packaging with the Paper Studio. It's all pretty standard, except for this one. This is the permanent vinyl. And this one is in one of those plastic tubes. And I know a lot of people struggle with getting these tubes open, so I'm gonna show you guys really quick how to do this. So there is tape around the top of the tube, so I just usually cut it with my scissors. I just kind of give it a quick like score and it'll come right off. And there's gonna be some on the front and some on the back, but usually that'll get it good enough that I can get the lid off. Once you have this plastic lid off, people wanna just pull this out do not do that because that's what's going to cause your vinyl to wrinkle. You're going to take the inside of your vinyl, find the middle, and you're going to take your thumb. What I do is I hold my thumb on it, and I'll get you guys a little bit closer. What I do is I'm going to take, you'll find where your beginning is, which is right here. Put your thumb on it, and then roll your vinyl around your thumb holding down that edge that you found and then just keep rolling this vinyl until it comes off the outside of the roll. Then pull it out, keeping hold of it with your hand so that it comes out of the roll just super duper easy. You can see how simple that was. I could put it back in the roll like that if I wanted to, but that is how you get those rolls of vinyl out of the roll. Now I will say I like that this is labeled on the back so it tells you whether it's permanent vinyl or removable, which is nice. And I like the grid on the back. I prefer a grid on the back of my permanent and a removable vinyl. It just makes it easier to cut it down when I need to. So then the other ones, like I said, are pretty standard. We'll just pop those out, but these are gonna be iron on. So I got glitter iron on. Then there's this cool foil looking one. And then we just got a solid iron on. So we're gonna do a couple little like test cuts. We're gonna see how we like it. We're gonna see what it's like to work with and the directions and all of that because these don't give you really a whole lot to go on. There's no, there's no cut settings or anything listed for these. So you're gonna have to do your own test cuts. So let's set up a couple of cuts over on Cricut Design Space and we'll do a few test cuts. So we're gonna do some test cuts just to see what cut settings work best for the vinyl that we're gonna use from Paper Studio. So to do a test cut, I just simply use the star shape. It works pretty well, nothing crazy, and I usually make it about an inch. That usually gives a pretty good indication of if the cut setting is going to work. Now the shapes have been a little bit slow today to pop up, so we'll just give it a second to appear. Now that our star has appeared, I'm just gonna change the width to one inch and that's all we have to do. We're not doing anything too crazy, so we're just gonna do test cutting, so you don't have to you know, resize, move, do anything like that. Go ahead and click Make It. And over on the Make It screen, you'll see that you have your canvas and it's good to go. So simply just click Continue. Now we're gonna start with the permanent vinyl as our test cutting subject. So from Feel Alone, I say it feels similar to like a tech wrap vinyl. So I'm gonna start cutting this on just the regular vinyl setting. I'm not gonna do anything else to it. I'm not gonna put any different pressures on it. We'll just start with vinyl since we know that this is a vinyl product. We are gonna start with the permanent vinyl. So this bright pink, I just thought this pink was pretty. So what we'll do is put this on our mat. And like I said, this does feel a little thin. 
Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how it cuts on that vinyl setting. But we're going to give it a shot and see how it does. The backing does remind me kind of more of a plastic than a paper. So let's take a look. We're going to load this. Again, we have this on the vinyl setting. So let's see how this test cut goes. All we did was just make a quick star. Then we're going to load our machine and we're going to let it cut out our star. Should just take one second. simple as that we're done we can go ahead and unload and I'm gonna just leave this on the mat since we are doing this as a test cut so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and weed out my star it cut okay it was a little bit crunchy as I call it when it cut so I might want to put more pressure I don't feel any cut through the back that's what I do here is I pull this back and I just check the back to see if it cut through I don't feel any cut through but I will say while looking at this vinyl under my bright lights, I am seeing a lot of variation on this first section, just like where it was in the tube, like the outside touching it. I've got a lot of like spots that are super glossy and then others that are matte. I don't like that. That's kind of not so good. Let's see if you guys can see those at all. Do you kind of see where it gets glossy and then where it's kind of like matte? I'm going to go over to the computer. I'm going to turn the pressure to more and see if I like that cut setting a little bit better. You do want to make sure to move your star over, which I have a video all about test cutting and I will link that down below. But this one, we're just going to give our paper studio vinyl a nice little review. But I wanted to do some test cuts on here to show you kind of how I do it, what I see, what I think, how it holds up against some of the other vinyl that I like, that kind of thing. So this is cutting on vinyl with more pressure. We're going to go ahead and unload, close this so it's out of our way, I'll turn this again, and then what I'm going to do is just, again, weed this. That feels a lot better. Um, let's take a look at the back. Again, I don't feel any cut through on the back. So I think for regular vinyl like this, their permanent line, I would probably do vinyl with more pressure. I got a little bit cleaner of a cut doing that. So next we'll try the iron on. We're just gonna go ahead and cut a star. So I'll go ahead and just take this off of our mat and put this to the side. So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna use this regular plain old iron on, which I would say um, I'm gonna try cutting on just everyday iron on. Now they do offer you some directions here. So it does say, uh, let's see, file die cut instructions for just settings. Yeah, it doesn't give you a setting, but it does tell you, um, like your temperatures and your peeling. So that's good. So I'm going to keep that to the side because we will want to reference that. And then this just has a little bit of tape on it. So let me peel that off. So then with all iron on, or at least most, you're going to want to put it with the vinyl side up. So carry your sheet side down. This feels really thick. Um, I am going to just go for the everyday iron on setting first. Uh, but this does feel like a very thick product very heavy I feel like on a shirt you wouldn't want to use this as a very solid piece so I'm gonna go ahead and load this and like I said I'm gonna cut this on the everyday iron-on setting first and we'll see how it goes We'll go ahead and unload but like I said I don't have a lot of hope for this one just because I can feel how thick and heavy this HTV feels to me so I'm gonna go ahead and find our star and let's just see how it did uh, it's not great um, it cut uh, actually it cut pretty okay 
I think it's just the carrier sheet on this is extremely sticky compared to other brands. So I would say that this cuts fine on everyday iron-on. I don't think you'd have an issue, but I do think it's going to be tough to weed. And we're going to do a couple little designs with it, so we will test it out. Um, and then we've got the foil iron-on. This one looks really cool. I just thought this was a fun one to try and see kind of how it compares to some of the others. So this is really pretty. Like, I just loved the look of this. I thought this looked cool. So I gotta find the tape, which is holding it closed, which is easier said than done, because I can't see it at all. There it is. And get that off. And we'll just do the same thing. We'll put this on our vinyl roll. I'm probably just gonna try this with Everyday Iron On as well. It feels kind of similar. It's pretty th recap our glitter iron-on cut on the regular glitter iron-on setting the foil cut on everyday iron-on plain old iron-on cut on everyday iron-on and then the vinyl cut the vinyl press with more pressure so that is our test cuts those worked out really really well that's why I always recommend doing test cuts you are not going to waste out on a ton of material if I were to cut this and have assumed to cut it on the foil setting it would have been an absolute mess so I'm gonna go ahead and just make some quick little designs we're probably just gonna make some hearts or something and we'll test all the different iron-on and the vinyl on a few things okay I whipped up this really cute little design super quick in Cricut Design Space just to let us try out cutting um, and then pressing the HTV and then we'll apply the vinyl to something. But this is just a little heart with the love in it. If you guys want this, let me know. I'll put it on my website for free um, for you guys. It took me like two seconds. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to move this over to this corner so that it's away from our test cuts. That way I don't have to unroll the um, vinyl roll. And you can move these anywhere on your sheet, like on your mat that you want to. It's really up to you. You just put it where you want. Now I'm going to cut the vinyl first, so I'm not going to mirror this. So I'm just going to simply click continue and select the vinyl setting. Now when we're ready to cut for HTV, we are going to need to mirror it. So all we simply needed to do for that is just click edit and then right down here, just choose mirror and it will flip our design. But like I said, I'm going to go ahead and cut the vinyl first so we don't want to mirror that one. So this one didn't weed great. It weeded okay. The centers of the letters were a little bit tough and it really didn't cut very well right here on the O. I'm gonna go ahead and get all of the vinyl cut out from the HTV, and then we will weed all of that next. I do apologize, I tried to record this, but apparently it didn't want to record. So we'll go ahead and move on to our next HTVs here and get those weeded. So what we're going to do is try to weed. So we'll start with this green one. And we know that this one worked pretty well with the star. So we'll see how it does with a more detailed design. Again, not super detailed, but, but has some smaller cuts. And I cut all of these at the exact same size. And that way it would give us a better idea of how this is going to go. Like I said, I don't love this carrier sheet. It's super sticky, like really hard to pull this vinyl off of here. It's not that the vinyl didn't cut. It's just that this carrier sheet is so sticky. So it's making it a little difficult to pull. And 
And because it's a little difficult to pull, it rips in places that you don't maybe necessarily want it to. And then it re-sticks itself back to the carrier sheet. That's something that I don't love. I don't love an ultra sticky carrier sheet when it comes to HTV. It's not necessary in my book. If you really need it to stick that well, you would get some heat tape. So I'm going to go ahead and weed all of this. This is just the top half of our offset. I just can't see which direction it goes. But see, again, it's so sticky that you can't really quite get it to pull off all the way sometimes. So that can be a little bit frustrating. My favorite is the foil just for ease of use but we'll get this all pressed so I have the um, directions saved from each of them so our solid iron-on presses at 280 to 315 glitter is three is 270 to 330 like these are really big um, temperature differences and then the foil is 255 to 295 glitter and solid or warm peel and the foil is a cool peel um, so let's start with the foil because that's the lowest temp and then we'll kind of move on to the next ones. So I thought we could go over these while our heat press heats up. There's some directions. So it says for application, remove iron on excess iron material from cutting mat. Leave only cut images on clear liner. Set iron to cotton linen setting. Ensure seam setting is off when using heat press. Refer to the chart below. For best results, use lightly cushioned ironing board. Preheat area with cut images will appear for 10 to 15 seconds. Position cut image liner side up onto preheated material. Always place press cloth between iron-on material liner and heated iron. Once the press cloth is placed on top, position image liner, apply medium pressure for 25 to 30 seconds. Flip material over and apply medium pressure for an additional 25 to 30 seconds. Once cooled, remove liner from adhered image. If section of image does not adhere, replace liner, press cloth over image, and re-iron loosen section. Using a tip of the iron, continuous motion with firm pressure for approximately 10 seconds. Okay, so that's a lot of steps um, for an iron-on, but we will follow their directions because that's what they want us to do. We're going to use this shirt that I have. I did a little bit of a test on it, and then I wanted to test taking the vinyl off. So this shirt just has kind of a little mess on it, which is fine. This is perfect for testing. This shirt, just so you guys know, is an Anvil Tri-Blend. It is 50% polyester, 25% cotton, and 25% rayon. It worked fine for putting just um, Easy Weed on. It worked just fine for that. So it should be okay to use with our um, Paper Studio. So just to keep it from getting anywhere on each other, I'll put one up here, I'll put one down here, and I'll put one over here so we can just kind of keep everything real kosher and we're not overpressing. So I'll take you guys over to the heat press, we'll pre-press, we'll follow all the directions and we'll see how it comes out. Okay, so according to the directions, the first thing that they want us to do is to preheat the area that we're going to adhere to. So I am going to turn my pressure down a little bit. I do have it pretty high. So I'm going to turn that down. It wants us to preheat for 10 to 15 seconds. That's still a little high. I think we're going to turn that down just a smidge when we're done with the preheat. And then we'll place our design onto our um, image. I did forget to mirror these. Um, it's fine since we're just testing. I'm not real worried about it. All right, we've preheated. Then it wants us to place our image down. Um, again, I forgot to mirror. It is not the end of the world. It will be fine. And it doesn't tell me what kind of pressure to use other than like medium firm. So I'm going to turn this down a little bit because it was a little high. And then it wants me to press for 25 to 30 seconds. And I just realized I didn't change my timer. So let's go to 25. We'll go 26. What the heck? 
we'll just be real fancy with it. All right, and let's go ahead and press, and we'll let that hit for 25 to 30 seconds. It's been 26 seconds, so let's go ahead and pull this up. Now this is a cold peel product, so we don't want to pull it off of the carrier sheet, but I'm going to use my shirt to kind of pull some of the heat out. And again, I did totally forget to go and mirror these, so they're going to be backwards. I don't care. This is just to test, so it doesn't matter that they're backwards. It's fine. Nobody's perfect. As you can see, we all make mistakes. So I'm just using kind of the cooler portions of the shirt stuff that wasn't on the press, just to pull some of that heat. You don't need a heat block, honestly. Here's a trick, get a candle. Get any kind of glass jar, get anything that's like cool to the touch, and voila, you can pull heat. Um, little marble tiles, things like that. So we're gonna just cool, 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 let this cool. All right, that's pretty darn cool. So we'll go ahead and peel this off. Let's go for it. Looks like it adhered pretty well, but it does want us to turn this inside out and press on the back. And it's going to want us to do that for every one of these, so that's going to be a little tedious in my opinion. I never like the iron-on that makes you do that. Hey look, it's the right way now. <laughs> that's okay, again, it's not a big deal if we made it backwards, just for a tester. Not the end of the world. So I'm just going to make sure all the wrinkles are out so it doesn't press any wrinkles into this. Alright, that looks pretty good. So again, it wants us to press it for another 25 to 30 seconds on the back. We've done that. All right, let's flip her back the way she should go and see how it looks. It looks really nice. It does, it looks good. It's really like sparkly. It's really fun. I really do like this um, iron on. It feels good. It's soft, like it's not crunchy feeling for this one. So I would say the foil would definitely be one that I like. I don't like the application process because I think it's a lot of steps, but I do like the style of it. So let's go ahead and grab the next one and we'll press that one down here on the bottom. Okay, so we want to preheat again. I'm just going to kind of make sure there's no major wrinkles. We're going to re preheat. I am going to turn the heat up a little bit on this because it does say up to 315, so I'm gonna go to like 305. We'll let that reheat. I'll probably repress it one more time before we go ahead and put this on, but they have a really big temperature scale here, so I'll show it to you so you guys can really see it. So we're ready to do our next one. So I've got this set to 306. It's showing 308, but once I press it, it'll go down a little bit. And I'm just gonna do that pre-press for about 10 to 15 seconds like it asks for. So we'll go to about 15 to 13 or so seconds on our timer. And then we're gonna place our solid design. That way we can test it, see how it goes. All right, let's go ahead and, that's our preheat. So go ahead and set this down. And then it wants us to heat it for 25 to 30 seconds. Go ahead and do that. Okay, go ahead and pull that off. Now this is a warm peel, meaning we can take the carrier sheet off right away. Ooh, well, it does say warm, so maybe they mean to let it go a little bit longer and cool down a little bit more. Usually when they say warm, you can pretty much peel right after, um, but that one didn't look like it wanted to stick right away. So let's cool it down a little using our sleeve. Let's just let it cool a bit. We'll just go ahead and cool that a little and see how it does. Ooh. All right, so part of, again, could be the fact that the carrier sheet is so darn sticky. I don't like this. This, is, this feels like it's gonna just peel everything off. Mm, it's not my favorite. I feel like it's stretching it really bad. I feel like it's just not... Not good. So I think with a, like, a less sticky carrier sheet, maybe. So then again, it wants us to flip it. This time I'm not going to go full inside out. I'm just going to flip it over and have that other section of t-shirt kind of covering it. Make sure it's not wrinkled right there. I don't care if it's wrinkled anywhere else. And again, we'll press for 25 to 30 seconds. Okay, done pressing on that side. So let's pull it off and see how it looks. I'll bring it up nice and close again. I forgot to mirror it, so it is going to be 
backwards, but I think it looks pretty good. I don't like the feel of it as much. Um, it's pretty soft, but it does feel a little bit like rubbery, if that makes sense. It looks nice. It is more of a, I would call it like a medium matte finish. It's not super glossy, but it's also not fully matte, but it, it is pretty soft. And I do feel like it wouldn't feel super heavy on a shirt, but it is, it is a little bit heavy. So let's go ahead and do our glitter next. We're going to put the glitter over here so that we can do it without getting anything on it. Um, I am going to press the glitter. It says that I can press it at 305. The glitter goes from 270 to 330. So let's up it to 320 like we would with Caesar. Okay, so it is preheated for the HTV. So what I'm going to do is just do that pre-press like they want. Again, I don't love this part. I don't like having to pre-press, then press, and then press again. I think it's a lot and it's kind of unnecessary in my opinion. But we'll, we'll go with it. Um, it's not a big deal, not the end of the world to have to do it. I just think for if you are making a lot of shirts, this would be just a lot of extra steps that I feel are pretty unnecessary. So we're going to do this glitter. So one concern that I have before I press this is that I do have some spots that look like they probably still have some adhesive on them. So I'm a little concerned that those are going to stick to the shirt, which would not be good. But you could trim it closer to the design to get rid of that extra adhesive. We're going to see how it goes. This is another warm peel, so I'm going to try to peel it super hot. If it doesn't peel super hot, we'll know that we need to let it cool a little bit before we peel it. All right, let's pop this up. And like I said, I want to try to peel it hot, so I'm just going to grab it right now. Oh, it looks like this one might, mm, might not. Nope. It's doing okay. Hot, hot, hot. It's very warm, very warm. Okay, I don't, oh, I got a little piece of hair stuck under there. No, I didn't. It's just stuck to the shirt. So it doesn't look like any of the extra glitter stuck, which was a concern for me. It looks pretty good, but what I'm going to do is flip it over. I'm going to do that reheat thing, which again, I feel is redundant, but we'll do it. We'll heat it again from the back. I just feel like it's not within the best interest of the HTV to do this, but I use things like Caesar and Starcraft that don't recommend doing that. If you're somebody who's coming from the Cricut world, this is something you're used to because your Cricut iron-on does want you to heat from the back. I feel like these are pretty similar products. I will say so far I like the Paper Studio better than the Cricut, but it is still not going to be like above my Starcraft and my Caesar. We are ready to pop this up. We're done. All right, I'm going to let that cool for just a second because it is pretty warm. And then I'll hold it up for you guys. Here is the finished glitter. It's really glittery. It's really pretty, but I will say the glitter is flaky. Um, I just kind of flaked some off and it's scratchy, but it is very flaky. So the glitter does come off of this glitter iron on. It is pretty though. It was easy to kind of put on the shirt for the most part. It doesn't feel super heavy or thick. You can see that it folds up pretty well. It does not feel very heavy or very thick. And it also doesn't feel like it would be super scratchy like on the inside. The inside feels nice and comfortable, but the outside, this is quite scratchy and quite shetty of the glitter. Now we're going to try to put the permanent vinyl. I'm just going to use it on this random tumbler that I have. I think it'll be fine. So what I'm going to do is grab some stuff. I'm going to grab some style tech, uh, medium tack transfer tape. Lay that down. I'm gonna grab a squeegee. So I like to just burnish from the back really quick before I cut this off. And then I'm just gonna cut this little square out of the transfer tape. Okay. And this again is just medium tack. It's nothing too crazy. Um, it's not overly tacky. And then I'm just gonna burnish this again from the front. Now I like to flip my vinyl over and remove my backing from my vinyl. So let's see how that goes. All right, that's really smooth, super easy. Now I'm gonna use my uh, squeegee to hold my cup so that I can put my decal on. So what I'm gonna do is fold it in half and I just, and I'm not trying to put this on straight or nice or even right now. Um, I'll do my best, but if it's not straight, I'm not really worried about it. This is just to test, to see how it feels, how it looks, what I think. So, all right, I've got the middle down, so let's work our way out. 
Ooh, we got a big old bubble. I got a big old crease going. Um, I get the crease is mostly because this is on a big, this is too big for this surface, but it's okay. It's not too bad. And what you can always do if you're getting a lot of creasing is come in and take and cut some slits in your transfer tape and cut some of your transfer tape off completely because you don't really need it. And that can really help with any creases that you might be getting. Um, I am still getting quite a few. Again, I think I just maybe made this a little too big for the surface. Um, I should have put this on a flat surface, but it's okay. This will do for now. It'll at least give us an idea. I will say it's pretty forgiving when it comes to like having to peel it back up to try to get rid of the creases. Um, so I will give it that, but that may not actually be a good thing. That may make it so that it doesn't um, really lay correctly and stay down, but we'll find out. All right, so this one's not gonna be perfect. It'll be close, but again, we shall see. So let's go ahead and just grab the other side. Again, it's gonna be kind of funky because this is way too big for this. It's fine, not a big deal. All right, let's 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 burnish it um, best we can with that big bubble and that big crease, but it's okay. Again, this is just to see if we like how it lays, and I just, this was too big. It's okay though, it's no big deal. This will actually really give me a good idea on like how it, how it holds. Okay, let's go ahead and peel. All right. Um, so I don't, I don't like that. Uh, it did not stay stuck down very well. And I did clean this with alcohol. Um, I let it dry completely. This was fully clean before I put this down. Um, well, that stayed a little bit better that time. So maybe it just needed a better burnish. Maybe I just didn't burnish it well. All right, let's see how it goes for the rest of the pieces. All right, the rest seems like it was staying down better, so I may just not have burnished that edge very well on that because all these little pieces are staying down. I will say this vinyl is a little thin for my taste. So um, what you can see and what makes it thin, you see how it changed color on the cup. Do you see how it's darker now? It's it's a lot darker um, because it's picking up the color from the cup. So being that this cup is like a silver, it's picking up that silver color and altering the color of the vinyl, um, which I don't like. You can see any kind of under bubbling that you have. Um, you can't really see the bubbles on the surface, but you can see it through the vinyl because again, it has that color change, that color shift in it. So this is a pretty thin vinyl, which isn't always a good thing. I would not probably recommend this as far as like if you were going to sell something um, or if you really needed it to stay that exact color because it's definitely not the same color anymore. See how much darker it is? It's so much darker than it was. It's like a completely different color now, which is very disappointing to me because I liked that bright pink and now it's like a dark pink. All right, let's go over and get our final views on all of our vinyl. My final thoughts on the Paper Studio brand products that we tried here in the video, and this is not definitely all of their products. They have a ton of different kinds that you can try, but I will say, so let's start with the vinyl. I have to say, I don't love it. I don't love the fact that it changed color a lot on a dark surface, so you'd really have to be conscious of that. It feels very thin, which is not necessarily a good thing, especially when it changes color. It also just didn't feel very sticky to me. It didn't really want to stick to this clean surface. And this cup has now cured for 48 hours since I filmed the video and it still doesn't feel like it's stuck down very well. And again, I just don't love how it changed color so drastically from this hot pink to a dark pink because I put it on a darker surface. So I would say it's fine. It'll work in a pinch, but it wouldn't be my first choice. Now, as for the iron-on, let's start with our solid iron-on. I have to say, this was really easy to cut, but the weeding was a little difficult, like I mentioned. I think the carrier sheet is a little bit too sticky for my taste. It just makes it a little bit harder to pull it off and to make sure that you don't get any creases in your HTV. I think the color is great. The color stays very true on the shirt. 
and I also think that it feels very, very nice on the shirt. I put this one down here in the lower corner, and it really is not super heavy on the shirt. I don't think it feels or sounds crinkly like some of the other brands, and I do think that it looks really nice because it's more of a matte finish. So again, I would say it is good. I would give it like maybe a 7 out of 10, um, just based on that sticky carrier sheet. Not my favorite thing. Let's go ahead to our foil iron-on. Now I have to say, this one was my favorite. This weeded beautifully, it cut beautifully, and I love the finish on it. I think it's really pretty. It was pretty easy to apply. Again, I don't love their application directions. I think they're a little overkill, but I did follow them. And I do think this is a pretty nice HTV. I like the finish. And just a reminder, I forgot to mirror. I do like the finish. I think it feels nice on the shirt. It doesn't feel overly heavy. And application was really easy. I would get, get this one like a 9 out of 10. And then finally, we have our glitter patterned HTV. I couldn't find any solid. They didn't have any in stock at the time. So this is a really pretty pattern, but I have a lot of issues with it. I didn't like how it weeded. It rips really easily and it feels very, very thin. Also, the carrier sheet holds a lot of glitter. The other thing that I noticed after I pressed it is that the glitter flakes off pretty easily on this, as well as the fact that it's very scratchy feeling on the glitter surface itself. Now I will say it does feel very light on the shirt and it doesn't feel like it's gonna like crinkle a lot or make a lot of noise, but it is a little bit just too rough and that flaking glitter really bothers me. I would give this like a five out of 10. I just don't think it's something that I would use over other branded products. Now that being said, price point wise, these are very, very expensive. Um, this alone I think is $16.99, not on sale. I believe this was $16.99, not on sale. $14.99, not on sale. And I wanna say $9.99. Now I did purchase them when they were offering 50% off of the Paper Studio brand stuff, but that's still very expensive compared to the prices that you can get at online retailers. But again, if you're looking for like a specific color or something and you really like the finish on something, it might be worth it for you. So again, do I like Paper Studio? It's okay. Would it be my first choice? It would not. But I do think it was fun to play with. I think it was a good thing to try. I think we learned some lessons like always make sure you mirror your HTV and make sure your vinyl stays true to its color. That's something really important. If you pick out a color and it changes because of the product you put it on, you may not like that color as much. So all in all, I would say Paper Studio is okay. I would put it in the mid range of where I would choose to use a vinyl. It's definitely not my favorite, but it's also definitely not my least favorite. I hope that you guys learned a few things in this video, including how to do test cuts, the cut settings for the different Paper Studio vinyl, and also just kind of my opinion on this product. Now, I do want to be completely transparent. I purchased all of these products by myself. Nobody gave them to me. They were not gifted to me. They were not sent to me. No one asked me for a review. So that is really important that you guys know that because I try to be really honest with you. If things are sent to me for free, I try to make sure to tell you um, if I am provided with products or they are paying for the video, I try to be honest and tell you. And you'll see a little like paid promotion thing up in this corner if the video does contain some sort of uh, promotion that I'm working with the company and I'll also try to tell you guys in the video's description. Now, I am super excited to maybe make a few more things with this and try it out a little bit more, but first impressions, I'm a I'm kind of a fan. I think it's okay. I don't like the vinyl. The HTV is okay. And I'm really excited to make some more things with this foil one. I absolutely love this one. That is definitely my favorite. Again, 9 out of 10. Like, would highly recommend that. It's super fun, super pretty, and was really easy to work with. If you guys have questions or if you guys want to see reviews of other vinyl, anything like that, let me know in those comments down below. I'm always happy to answer those for you. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. You can hit that big red subscribe button down below. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and as always, happy crafting.